Let's work on the 928 this week. We've been building the widest Porsche 928 ever in existence. That's not true, obviously, but I would like to believe that. This is our Porsche 928 wide body project. We've done custom flares in the front, custom quarter panels in the rear, a rear metal spoiler. We have a custom bumper that's in progress. There's a lot going on in this build and it's been tabled for a little bit, but I think it's time to get back on it. Since we haven't uh, worked on this thing in a while, it's a little bit dusty. So before we get anywhere, let's make a big dusty mess. Filthy. Now this thing's all clean, you can actually see what the car really looks like. It's time to get down to business. So the goal for this week is to get these fenders welded onto the car. I mean, fender extensions, fender flares, it's like half a fender. So I can't really say it's extension or flare because it's more than just that, I think. Uh, but what we're gonna do is get this welded on. Now the challenge here is that these are aluminum and the original fenders are also aluminum. And if anyone's familiar with welding from aluminum, it's a lot different than welding steel. And I do a ton of steel welding, not a ton of aluminum welding. Um, I've already welded these sections together. On the other side of the car, you'll notice that uh, the two halves are not welded together yet. So I also need to do that as well. Um, but we're gonna get these welded on and hopefully get the internal duct work figured out as well. And now all this is in preparation for the front bumper for whenever that shows up. So there's a couple challenges with welding this fender on that are past just the aluminum part. Um, we have like this like air, we'll call it a duct for like to relieve pressure in the fender well here. Um, if, you know, I have a piece floating here that'll get welded in, you know, at some point. But uh, more importantly, I also need to make sure we're gonna retain the original fender right here on the back side up to like, I'm thinking this point where this kind of cuts over. So I'm gonna have to make sure to mark that. Um, and also we're gonna have to weld that, which would be really tough. <laughs> There's a lot of 90 degree welds that are really tight in that um, I didn't really consider in this scenario. So I gotta come up with a plan of how I'm going to actually weld these pieces in in different layers so I can actually accomplish it. Um, and as I'm speaking about it right now, I'm wondering if this piece right here, that's the inner ductwork that doesn't fit amazing right now because it's just kind of jammed in a weird spot. If I should actually weld this to the fender first. Hmm. Yeah, and then weld this fender to that. Like I said, a little complicated. All right, so behind this fender lives the washer bottle and what was the charcoal canister, which I just pulled out to make room. Um, the plus side is I don't think I need to remove these because all my weld areas I have actual full access to from behind. Um, it's tight, but it's doable. I don't particularly want to remove things that I don't have to because they're dated and I don't want to break anything and I'd rather work around it. Um, I took a marker here and I framed the outline of where the fender is. Um, I'm gonna cut the fender back close to that line just so I have the extra junk out of the way. Um, and also this edge right here, which will be behind that vent, I'm gonna um, flange it over so it's a straight line down behind that kind of like tapers in so it has some rigidity to it and also for the air to go through um, and clean that up before I do anything. And I'm also gonna move the paint down here so that I can weld this bad boy where it's supposed to be, which is, I marked it on here, about, about right there. Get that all cleaned up and ready to go. Cause I'm thinking what I might do on this side where it attaches to the fender is rather than trying to weld the back side of that, which is gonna be physically impossible to get into there, I might just panel bond it because there's no reason not to, honestly. <laughs> So as I'm uh, grinding the paint off this to prep it for welding, I'm realizing I can't get to the back side of this to also prep that for welding, which means I have to move this fender, which is inevitable. I knew it had to happen eventually. I just have been avoiding it because the fender's all nice and fit up and I also don't really want to remove it. So yeah, to do this properly, I'm gonna have to cut this back and then we're pulling the fender off so that uh, I can actually properly prep the rear side. I 
Oh no. Oh, there you go. Look at that, so much room for activities now. Porsche hates me. They uh, put three screws behind the washer bottle, which means I had to take out the washer bottle, which I did not want to do in the first place. But I guess it must be done, so I'm fueling up. I don't think this is a uh, functional hose clamp anymore. I have to be if I should just cut these lines rather than try to pry them off because I feel like I'm gonna break something. Woo! Wait. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> Do I just. I don't, I, don't, I don't know. Why does it gotta go up like that? <laughs> it's like uh, cleaning the capper for me. Well, Alright, so this is running for like a good three minutes and it's gone down maybe an inch. So plan B, I'm gonna Indiana Jones this, which I don't wanna make that reference because the mummy's way better, but we can get into that again another day. So if I just like, oh wait, now I can get this thing off. Just, uh, hey, hey, aha! Big brain moves only. How are you supposed to get to that? There it was right here. I'm just having a time. This hose will not come off. The lower hose down here at the pump that you literally could not get to unless you remove the pump, which I'm not doing because I want it to stay sealed. Ah, oh, shoot. If I take this hose off, it's gonna leak everywhere. Uh, <laughs> I hate washer pumps. Plan 72, Let's pull the pump out. Leave the pump behind, so I want to break that hose loose. I don't want to deal with. So drain faster. There we go. Now I really have to pee. <laughs> I got the hose that moved like two millimeters. It will not come off. That was not supposed to be that hard. Yeah, hey, look at the inside of this. I don't even know. I made a bit of a mess. Yup. There's pieces missing. Yeah, and I have like two gallons of Wash washer fluid? fluid, and I think it wasn't completely filled. There's an excessive amount of washer fluid for a vehicle. Well, it's a European thing. There's no way I'm gonna be able to weld this either. What do you think about that? I don't know. Is this like a big, a big, <laughs> we're not working on jigsaw, but it feels like a big jigsaw puzzle. I was originally going to pull the fender off and clean the backside off, but I think now that I have the washer bottle out, which took up the entire space there. Right. You can get back there I think and I can get it. in there enough to clean off where I need to Yeah, I would say so. so. I think I'm just gonna do that instead. Yep. Because the rest of this, I can get to just fine. Okay. All right, yep. I think the plan as you outlined it will work. Okay, good. I hope it works. <laughs> he thinks it works, I hope it works. We'll find out. Yep. At some point during this video. If it actually stay tuned. Work. Yes, stay tuned guys. They're like super juicy. This is so wet, it's so gross. I may have made some, some choices today. There. I can't like fully mark it. But you know, we'll do what we can. I genuinely don't know how well this is gonna go. This is gonna be very tough. <laughs> Nervous laughter. So the goal here was just to get this all tacked up and it's really tough because I'm taking the edge of really thin aluminum and welding it to thin aluminum, which means that this needs way more heat to get penetration, which then like just destroys the edge. So I was trying to like, what I had to do was put the heat into the aluminum, like the, the base fender itself, and then kind of flick it into the edge of the uh, new piece. And I think it actually turned out pretty decent. Um, I'm gonna grind these tacks flush uh, we'll see if there's enough there to, which I think it's plenty to hold this in place because what's going to end up happening here is we're going to use some fiber roll or uh, fiberglass to uh, hide the seam when the uh, fender's finished because there's no point in me running a solid bead there where I don't really need it, um, especially with the uh, extra pain involved in trying to weld those two edges together, or the edge and the fender together. Um, so I'm, I'm actually overall pretty happy with how it came out here. It's supposed to actually be out like this, but I'm uh, pushing on stuff. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna get these tacks ground down flush and we're gonna move to the next step. Scratch that, I ground some of these tacks down 
And um, after repositioning this a little bit, it already started to crack some of them, like that one there. So rather than play that game, I think I'm gonna run a beat at least from like here to here. Maybe not the whole way down the corner. The corner back here, I'm gonna have to probably weld the backside, I think, if I wanna do that. Um, and then the problem I have too is, how the heck do I grind that tack? I gotta, I gotta think on that as well. This actually welded a little bit better than I thought it would. It also was possibly the hardest thing I've ever welded. But you know what, you gotta challenge yourself, right? So um, I think I'm gonna risk it and I'm gonna go through here too. I think I can, I think I can make it. It's, it. it's extremely tight to weld into. I mean, like, look at that. Like, I have very little wiggle room at all with a torch, um, but I'm gonna try it, because why not? It sounds like a good idea. I'm like a reverse porcupine. The pain's on the inside. Help. Two tabs here, um, so I can click it, keep the panel back on and locate it. Otherwise, it'd be a pain to kind of hold it in place and figure out exactly where it needs to be. So I leave two tabs. I can click out of those. Then I'll get my tacks done, and then I can cut them back off later. Um, that's a little little secret for later um, that you guys should try doing in your own projects because it is a time saver. I already spent the time like getting click out all nicely in the car. It'd make no sense to just cut all those tabs off and. Uh, Try to float it there without them. All right, so this side's ready to weld. However, there's this thing apparently called sharing that I have to do because we have one 220 outlet in the shop, which is kind of silly. We need to upgrade that. And uh, like seven welders and someone else in the shop needs to use the 220 for a little bit. So rather than uh, just stopping and twiddling my thumbs for a couple hours, I'm gonna get the other side ready. So this side's a little different as you can see because on that side, I made like the wheel arch separately and it had a weird weld line. This side I did more in one piece. So I have two halves to weld together, but I'm gonna do that secondary thing. What I'm gonna do first actually is get the upper piece welded into the car because there's another problem. The other problem is the inner piece down here for the duct. I haven't made that quite yet. So that needs to happen as well. Um, but that doesn't need to stop me quite yet. I can get this fitted and welded first and go from there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna strip this down to the same process I did over there. And it's even easier because there shouldn't be anything behind here this time. I don't have a, a wiper fluid bottle. Um, watch, there's gonna be some other bottle for something else I didn't know existed in some fluid that, I don't know, like headlight fluid maybe? Turn signal fluid? I don't know, something like that. Um, but yeah. Enjoy a sick ass montage. This side doesn't have the washer tank, but what it does have, this is where 928 owners transported their eggs from the grocery store. This is where 928 drivers kept their tennis balls when leaving the court. This is where Scarface kept his <laughs> balls. This is where Chuck Norris keeps his spare testicles. See, look at this little dude, he's like, he's like. If you're new here, you're probably wondering what the heck this stuff is and why I keep putting it on the car today. So this is Dicam Steel Blue. You can get it in like brush form, you can get it in aerosol form, or my favorite way, which I haven't tried yet, but I keep seeing people do, is to take this stuff, pour it into like a, a graffiti marker and use that. I'm gonna do that soon. But anyway, what I like to do with this stuff is spray it onto the parent metal that I'm going to be welding a panel to because then I can take a scribe 
and the scribe line is going to be super thin so that I can then scribe the edge of the panel over top of it, then cut it back exactly to the edge of that scribe line. Then I'll get the crispiest, tightest butt I possibly can to weld. Stop laughing at me. It's not that. Got to cover, cover the broken headlight that Logan totally didn't break. It was totally came that way from factory. It was, it was already pre-broken. We're doing a thing, yeah. okay. What, what does that look like to you? Well, it looks like a vacuum reservoir. What's it supposed to look like? <laughs> this is exactly what you said would happen. There you go. I'm a little nervous, not gonna lie. This is extremely thin aluminum to extremely thin aluminum. Um, don't mind the gap, it, it pushes together just because I only have two Clecos on it, but I, uh, I'm a little nervous. This actually seems like it might go okay. And also I am a little concerned because when something seems like it's gonna go okay, this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. This definitely was not me, it was Tony. I take zero responsibility for this action. The welder randomly like shut off the gas on me when I, I struck the arc, it like reset, and I blew a big hole in there. And this happened somehow, I don't really know how it happened. I'm gonna try uh, putting my ground somewhere else this time and maybe that'll help. Now that this panel's like kinda tacked, it'll work better too. Now it's pulling the panel weird. Eh. I think it was a ground issue, so it's probably me, a me issue. This is definitely not a me issue though. I figured out the whole uh, blowing holes thing and the welder shutting off of me. Uh, yeah, this cable was loose. It just needed to tighten down a little bit. And since I did that, it's been fine, so. 100% user error. I still take the responsibility for that cup though, I broke. I mean, that broke. These look terrible, no, no, don't film that one. Pick a good one to film. <laughs> this, I'm riding the struggle bus right now. No, stop, stop clicking the sh Everything hurts and I'm dying. But I am figuring it out. Um, turns out my machine settings were way off, uh, which if you're a welder even watching this, you're probably like have been screaming at the TV, like what are you doing? Um, yeah, uh, my previous aluminum welding I've done was with an entirely different machine and I had it set up so nicely. And this one I did not have set up nicely. I didn't realize like my frequency was way off. The cleaning, uh, like the balance percentage is way off. Um, I have it kind of dialed in now. I have like 30% balance about like 100 and I think it's like 110 frequency now. Um, um, and also the other problem I was having cause it's like the aluminum that I've shaped, it has different thick varying thicknesses. Now the thicknesses are so minute, however, it makes it a little more complicated. With steel, I got really used to, uh, what, tweaking my process as I go along, you know, more filler, less filler, how I angle the torch. This is entirely different. The other problem I'm having is I wanna use like a really low amperage naturally because it's so thin, but with aluminum, if you're too low of an amperage, the arc, it just wanders like crazy. It goes all over the place. So trying to find the sweet spot of uh, an amperage that'll penetrate well, but also uh, not blow through constantly has just been really challenging. Um, I landed on about 45 amps, and I found out that if I actually do a startup, like the first initial strike at 20 amps, it won't blow through immediately. So yeah, this has been like a really tough learning process. Thankfully, all of this gets ground flush anyway, so it doesn't really matter in the long run, as long as I have good penetration. You know, live and learn. Um, but yeah, I, I've jumped around all over here now just to try different areas and different styles of and different settings and everything else. You'll notice there's some spots like right here where like I had it just, just perfect. But then I tried that exact same setting somewhere else and it just, you know, didn't like it. So now to move forward, um, I need to go through, I think what I'm gonna do is like all these like random booger blobs that kind of just like were not cooperating. I'm gonna grind them off quick. 
get them out of my way and just try to bl like blast back over all the little pinholes and stuff I have going on in craters. And then after I get this welded here, I'll be able to go through, grind the weld smooth, hammer and dolly them out, uh, fix some of this crazy warpage I got going on here from, from welding, and we'll have an attached fender. My soul will be detached, but the fender will be attached. You know what I feel like? I feel like a kid that like got in trouble for like digging holes in the backyard and has to go back through and fill them back up, and that's the not fun part. Just filling all these holes, the big old blob holes. It's not there anymore because I filled it. It's okay, Dad, I filled it. All right. It smells a little funky. Hello? Oh, that's not good. <laughs> uh. Yeah. All right, so I got the welds ground inside and out, which was a royal pain, and grinding aluminum sucks. So I got it welded. Um, like anything, when you weld sheet metal, it's warped. There's some areas that aren't too bad because of the shape here, but there's other areas like back here where it's like bloop. So not a big deal. When you weld something, the metal shrinks. So we used to take a hammer and dolly and hammer it to bring it back out. So let's see what we can do with a little bit of, some, a little bit of tweaking here. After a very frustrating time, I got the fender welded onto the 928. Unfortunately, ran out of time for me to do the other side because we have a lot of stuff coming up very soon. In fact, we're gonna be at the Coastal Virginia Auto Show, what, a week after this video comes out. Uh, we're gonna be there from November 17th to the 19th. Come on out and say hi if you're in the area. We're also gonna be giving out trophy to our favorite build that's there, so. To add to that, we're gonna be road tripping the slant nose the whole way from here to the Virginia Beach which is gonna be the farthest that's ever been from home. And I'm sure stuff's gonna happen. So that's gonna be a video coming up soon. There's still a lot left to do in the 928, but this is as far as we're gonna to get today. So check back for some more 928 content coming soon because we're getting this project rolling further past just this one video and more Project Jigsaw stuff coming up soon as well. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next Saturday.